Hello students. You might have gone through the earlier shared video lectures. I hope that you are listening to these lectures continuously. If you can't understand in the first go, definitely you can rewind the video. Listen to these uh, videos until you understand. Of course, these recordings that I have prepared is in English. Of course, in our classroom teaching, we use uh, fifty percent English or almost fifty percent of English and up to fifty percent in Marathi. But definitely, uh, these so-called practices of speaking, writing, and listening will help you a lot to develop your linguistic capacities. and that is what i am deliberately recording these videos in english medium no doubt these videos or these lectures are going to be useful not for you but those who are interest holders all over the world these videos may be viewed by so many people across the world and definitely it will help them to understand the concept the very gist of the concept the theme the points that i probably shared and say after a year everything will be available on the internet the student can listen to these online videos uh, through youtube everything is uh, say in, under the process and it will help you a great deal to learn in the next say so called academic year onwards so this corona pandemic is going to revolutionize each and every sector of human life irrespective of that we turn to our say so called subject that is paper number 5 literary criticism in literary criticism we are going to study the theory <coughs> the the ideas that major proponents of theories have put forth for the stakeholders for the interest holders to read this kind of a theory is part of a say so called knowledge it's it's a creation of a knowledge the theories by which we can create new knowledges in different perspectives and definitely it will help you a great deal but we were going on to the theories by respective philosophers or theorists definitely we need to understand the first unit it is very simple one and that we have to study here see uh, in our so called um, say syllabus we have this particular term and that is simile it's it's a kind of a theory as we have studied the figures of speech when um, you were in fba we have gone through the poetry the different forms of poetry so poetry is a kind of a bouquet it's a kind of an flowers arranged in a systematic way to make it look uh, beautiful until it is perfect beautifully perfect it offers us as a bouquet it symbolizes a type of bouquet so simile is about this simile stands for a figure of speech ornamental qualities in what way similes are used similes are used in the poetic language in the prose format similes are used in day to day conversations but how they are to be located how are they to be understood in literary theory or in literary say so called language the author or the poet uses the comparison 
comparison between the two distinct things, different things, but this comparison between two things are expressed by the words like, like or as. If the comparison is made between two objects with the word uh, uh, like or as such a poetic say or sentence such a poetic stanza the literary device that we see is called as simile if the author also definitely writes the novel and in novel while describing things the author may reset to work on the comparison and if he uses very tersely, very shortened form of or say language he used suppose uh, francis bacon is very much famous for his essays and his essays are very terse terse means it's very short and form of say the words that is used but in the meaning of the words are quite explicit it indicates so many multiple layers of meaning palimpsest of meaning and that we see with the use of terse language so the author may be said to be using simile the example it's very famous example from a poem a red rose by robert burns oh my love is like a red red rose oh my love is like a red red rose see with the use of the simple say line robert burns is using multiple figures of speech in this particular say, line Oh, my love, love as an emotion. His emotion of love, his emotion of love is like a red rose. It stands for, it stands for his love is like a red rose. So the subject is love. And the comparison is made by red rose, red rose and love. Both things are put together. These two things are different one from each other, but the comparison is made by the use of words like like. So there is a simile. At the same time, we have another figure of speech. Oh my love. What do we understand is love as an emotion but the beloved is also called as a love and his beloved is like a red rose full of bloom full of rosiness and full of love red rose stands for the symbol of love so his beloved human being beloved is a red rose so there is a personification love is personified in his beloved so that makes it as personification there is one of the figure of speech that we see red red rose the consonant sound r, r sound is repeated so there is an alliteration so in this way we can understand that that by using this simple line the poet is using three say figures of speech oh it again stands for the address, okay? That again stands for the, say, so-called things. Then another example that we take from the ancient mariner, bus ST Rich, and ice must I came floating by as green as emerald. See, ancient mariner is a ballad. Is very famous ballad it stands for the tempest when the ancient mariner with other members of the ship crew sit on a sea voyage journey 
one of the sheep made shot the sea bird when they were in the sea and it stands for the bad omen ashub amangal bad omen and with the death of the sea bird the shipmates the crew members were fearing that something something bad something disastrous is going to happen and that is immediately reflected when there there was a tempest there was a tempest that came raging on but when they were making their progress a stick called rage or the ancient mariner describes very beautifully that and ice a piece a large piece of ice it's it's so tall and top mast high mast it's mast high see came floating by it's came near floating okay it came floating by their ship and it appears as green as an emerald the ice cube the huge big ice cube just like a mast high came floating by it is as green as an emerald emerald means it's a precious a uh, stone it's kind of a jewel it was as green as emerald so the comparison is made between the ice cube the ice and emerald it is as green as emerald so see it's a simile such a similes are there there are such a similes that are used by the poet to increase the beauty of the poem to uh, give the poem a poetic touch to add his own emotions to express his deepest feelings to make it uh, much more expressive much more symbolical at the same time it refers to the so many subjects okay that is what the simile has an ornamental quality then <clears throat> if the simile is elaborated explained by the poet there are such similes and we have other types of similes that are also there epic similes in what happens in the similes there are two types of things in simile or uses of simile secondary subject and primary subject secondary subject is called as a vehicle vehicle is elaborated close to it brings very close there are some kind of a parallels to the primary subject so primary subject is called as a tenor so ice love is a primary one but the vehicle has brought very close to the primary subject to establish the parallel by the words like as and like and that is what there these things these are very uh, very well explored by i a richards in his irony as a language of poetry just do read this particular essay it stands for the practical criticism by i it is and it will help you a great deal we have uh, certain theories in uh, the uses of the simile we have similarity view see love and the red rose has something similar ice and emerald has something similarity both of things have similarity and that brings them close and that 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 is why the poet can establish the parallel 
similarity is there that is what there is an interaction between these two vehicle and tino there is an interaction between these two subjects vehicle and tino that makes this use of simile possible then we have pragmatic view it stands for it is a, it is an accepted it is not the person poet's personal use only the similarity or the interaction only the poet know poet knows no these things are equally known to the public to the reader at large and that makes this it has pragmatic say views it has pragmatic uh, say appreciation and those things are experienced by the poet can be experienced by the readers it it's a kind of a shared platform where the poet uh, and the readers are brought so the things are very closely uh, interlinked similarity interaction not just for the poet but for others also so it sense for the pragmatic view of the theory then we have there is cognitive view also when the poet is using this uh, so called similarity making his subject much more explicit much more symbolical in the sense the poet is hinting at the cognitive perspective of these theories similarity interaction and pragmatic everything is in cognitive cognitive means mind intellect imagination feelings and everything that are in the human mind it stands for the cognitive so everything that we see are in the cognitive perspective and it needs to be understood with the help of cognition and that is what the vehicle and tenor are explicitly referring to the cognitive aspects cognitive perspectives of the reader of the poet and that is what these theories are very much there when the poet is using these simile so this is very short term only you have to develop such a kind of a uh, so called words develop a certain kind of a writing strategy and path this definitely you will come to a proper understanding of the simile it's a kind of a short term it's a term that you have or uh, you have to write probably 8 uh, to 10 lines probably 8 to 10 lines and you have to give more and more examples in this particular type of writing so uh, definitely it will help you to write in a proper way so this term is very short one and you do have to uh, understand and take care of that you got the proper understanding of this simile term for better uh, say perspective you can go through the book that is uh, practical criticism which is available in our library it is by anand kulkarni and chaskar sir it is published by university of pune at the same time you can go through the glossary of uh, literary terms you can also go through the oxford english uh, glossary of terms and uh, of course there is other books also but Uh, the practical reading of some of the poems will also help you a lot so uh, reading original text or reading original poems will uh, help you to supply these types of similes so that you can impregnate and conceive your answer in much more detail so i hope these guidelines will help you to write more and more about simile okay with this first i Oh, end this particular lecture. Thank you.